Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about weight painting because I have noticed many mistakes in and are usually the same mistakes all over again in all of my students or in some of them and it will be interesting to talk about this to I don't know, maybe let people understand that it's not that difficult as they think they this is because people think that weight painting is the hardest part of rigging <laughs> and it's actually completely the opposite, it's the easiest you just play some cool music and just go with it if you understand, if you understand what you're doing it should be easy so this girl already has some weight paints, still needs some work because I just made her made this for for a pose so I already finished the pose and it's already uh, done but well some of it is not completely fine but however it's decent so one of the biggest mistakes is usually the clavicles people for some reason forget that the clavicle exists and when they want to raise the arm they use the shoulder and they say hey it's losing a lot of volume here well of course you're breaking the arm you have to use the clavicle and then you raise the, the shoulder and then you're not breaking it and it's more natural and if you notice even if you don't raise the um, the shoulder the, the clavicle is preserving the volume here some people I don't know why they paint like from the last spine joint and the neck in here so there is always like a hole in there you just have to raise your own arm and see that it's not that should not work that way okay something important that is a mistake I have is that I have reverse influences here let's see what I'm talking about in this case I'm, I'm going to put the wireframe this is the very middle part of the of the model and if I raise this part I'm moving as well a lot of the influences of the right that shouldn't happen and probably if I go this way it will be the same see so it's this is reverse influences and shouldn't happen is when the left side is influencing the right side and well you just have to remove the weights in there so that is not correct and I admit it elbows and knees are usually a part that people go like for ex well in this case I have a very uh, loose type of clothing but when it's very skinny they usually paint like super soft in here super soft in here and they try to avoid as much as possible the intersection for example in here I of course have intersection here and here as well obviously because well my former boss used to say that it's better to have intersection than, than have a uh, than lose volume and it's definitely true this is this looks way much better than if you have like a hole in here because it doesn't look natural <clears throat> and in this case it doesn't look bad either so it's better to have this intersection than trying to make it perfect inside and it's going to look ugly outside uh, with the knees well it's quite the same the same idea but in this case I have very oh, oh pull back to. in this case I have um, classic linear deformation here if I go to dual quaternion it maybe looks better somehow in this type of character but it looks better in the knee but it doesn't look better in other places so I keep it classic linear um, also well you can just go and if you think this looks better you can just go to put it in weight blended and go to skin weights um, where it says weight type just go to DQ which means dual quaternion everything is black which means everything is in classic linear and you just add a little bit of dual quaternion there so you can have dual quaternion exactly in the parts that you want and classic linear in, in the rest of the body and you can smooth it a little bit 
so well that's a that's a tip for so maybe this looks better than this let me show you see this rather than this because it's losing well and also I can go better with this uh, like for example let's straight to the moon what is here not a little bit of influence there is it even ah oh, wait 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 yes of course go to skin weights obviously see a little bit there there we go now it looks way much better and also here you should add a little bit more of influence of the upper part of the leg so wait uh, yeah this is way better than this uh, but be careful with classic uh, sorry dual patterning because it sometimes makes ugly deformations when you do stretchiness in my case it's very simple rig so it doesn't matter it's not doing anything weird but just be careful with that see another reverse influence here but when I move this leg is moving this part that shouldn't happen okay so knees and elbows we are done with that and I already took well maybe no I haven't about the spine what you have to take in consideration is all the three axes when the most common uh, movement of the spine is going to be front and backwards like this the second most common movement of the spine is going to be side to side and the third one is going to be twisting so let me show you the this you see it's really really smooth all over and you you don't have like breaks well I think in the in the blouse in this yellow stuff I have some issues let me see yeah that it goes like this it shouldn't go like this so you have to smooth that part a little bit I have a smooth stuff that is called smooth skin weight I think it's from brave rabbit ah no this is this is um wrap deformer oh that makes all the sense so the wrong one is the body so yeah just go on. just paint this a little bit it's fixed the this tool is free by the way you can download it in brave rabbit.com it's done by ingo clemens okay so the spine you have to move it all over all the in all the different axes of rotation so you make sure that it's working correctly and if you have it like IK like mine you have to also translate it as well for the head well I have a very specific type of head here that has like controllers in the upper part and in the lower oops let me look and in the lower part should not, should not affect the hair but for the project it was pretty handy to do this instead but yeah well obviously this is the type of Josh Sobel type of rig just be careful to do this smooth I'm going to hide the hair for a second yeah so well, this is too crazy but try to make it smooth here shouldn't be influencing this too much but at least the, the front part is nice and I'm showing my mistakes as well I'm not saying everything is perfect I do mistake. I do a lot of mistakes all the time <laughs> okay so about the neck you have to be careful in the front part this part here to smooth it with the jaw if you have a jaw so you have to smooth it there and with the head so you avoid like having random like bulks in the geometry and stuff stuff like that 
This one is very easy. I, I think I didn't even paint it. Shame on me. But it was working fine. <laughs> you just have to smooth, 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 and that's it. To make it look prettier. And the base has to be super solid so they don't, they don't move too much. And that's it. With, uh, with this type of stuff and, and tails and that type of stuff as well. The fit is something that is incredibly easy to fix and so... I don't understand why people get it so complicated. I'm going to put this one, the red one, in uh, preset default, default values. The default values usually I'm going to put to just select the center of gravity and move it down. Well, this is not default value, get out of here. <laughs> well, usually default value raise the heel of the feet when I move the center of gravity in the lower part, to the lower part. But what it should happen is that it should stay exactly where it is. And when you do this type of uh, movements, for example, in this case 35 I think is the limit for a uh, ball roll. You see that this is completely solid here and this is completely solid here. This is not moving down and if you continue well, it goes... <laughs> obviously ignore this one because I fucked up. It goes completely up. It's not breaking the, uh, the ankle. It's not losing any volume, and it looks pretty fine. If you do toe tap, it's quite the same. And if you do it lower, you're not losing any volume. Well, obviously a little bit, because you need to smooth it. And you're not losing much volume in this part. So it looks actually pretty great. I don't understand why some people, I don't really get it, that they put the ball roll, the, sorry, the ball joint, like in here. Like they put the ankle here and the ball in here. And it should be exactly where the, well in this case she has like clown shoes. But usually it should go like in exactly the part of the shoe that is going to bend or a little bit up where you have the beginning of the how is it called the the toes the fingers of the foot okay so very important is the heel has to be super sorry the ankle in this case has to be super super uh, white let me show you this this is white and this is white and a little bit of softness here for the for better deformation but yeah basically and last but not least well maybe I can also talk about the job but the fingers you have to paint them with love you have to look everywhere if they are being well painted in this case, I'm losing a lot of volume as well. I can go again with dual quaternion. But if you go with dual quaternion, it looks disgustingly awful. So, better is to use classic linear and just paint a little bit of dual quaternion. Soften dual quaternion in these parts of the fingers. Um, well, they are not very well painted, <laughs> to be honest. But this should be like super straight each part of the finger should be straight here straight here straight here and in this inner part should be smooth this is not a good example though <laughs> but well it's, it's somehow but because people usually go like for example skin reset before weights they keep it like super uh, round and they look like, I don't know, maybe they think that it looks super cartoony, but it actually looks like they have really bad weight paint. 
So, well, this is a start. It needs more love, but it's a start. And if you use um, weight blended weights, it will look super, super nice. Okay. And the jaw. Well, there are two types of of weights of the jaw that people usually use. The one that is round, like this one, that you go completely round in here. And some people from Disney say that it's better to have like the corner defining here, like super edgy in here and in here, so it looks like a V. But I mean, I have done that before and it looks fine, but what if you really need a no? Uh, it's hard to remove it, so you have to make an, a specific blend shape for the O instead of making a specific pinches for the corners. So it's one or another. At the end of the day, you have to make a correction for it. So I prefer the O rather. It looks better, in my opinion. And. Yeah, well, that's pretty much it. Just uh, avoid the robotina. I don't know if you say robotina in English. I have no idea. But it's like, for example, that it looks super square. Like this is super so uh, solid weights of the head, and this is super solid weights of the jaw, and it looks like the robot from Super Sonics. Do people still know that? I don't know. It's from the nineties, I think. I don't know. Well, I th and that's pretty much it. It's not like the best example, it has a lot of mistakes because I painted today in the morning <laughs> and it's Sunday and it's my free day, but still I'm doing that, so... Hope you like it and hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching.